Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of MIPS Crash Course, the series where we look at the MIPS assembly language and how to do some neat stuff with it um, through some actual practical examples. So we'll start out. Um, so previous two videos, what did we look at? We looked at you know simple hello world. So how do we say print things to the uh, to the console uh, or to the uh, output? And then we also looked at how do we get things into. So how do we read things like uh, like an integer into uh, our program that we can use to do some kind of operation and then print it back out or just read it in and send it out. So we're actually going to look at how to do uh, arithmetic and specifically because, um, you know, integer based arithmetic is rather straightforward. We can just use instructions like add or add immediate, um, which we've already seen before. Um, in the assembled part of the code from previous uh, um, previous examples, we're going to look at doing some floating point stuff. So floating point stuff is just how the uh, how a machine it's a standard for how a machine represents uh, numbers with say a decimal place, and it does it through this thing called the IEEE 754 standard. So feel free to look that up if you want to know more. That's how you actually get the bit representation um, for floating point numbers, but we're not going to cover that today. We're just going to be considering them as floating point numbers and how do we work with them. So the first thing we're going to do when we go into this program, we'll look at a couple things. So we'll look at, uh, we're going to be doing something called SAXB. And SAXB was a, was a very common benchmark from back in the day. And it was a single precision scaled um, addition. So SAXB is, the S is single precision. The operation is actually A times X plus Y. That's what SAXB is. Usually it's done on say like a vector, uh, but in our case, we'll just do it on a single element just to get the idea of uh, arithmetic, uh, basic arithmetic in MIPS. So first thing we'll do is we'll do what we've done in the previous things, which is we'll set up uh, the machine to print uh, a prompt, which we have defined in the data section of our program. And instead of doing a load immediate, We'll use an actual instruction. So the load immediate will get translated into a uh, into this addition. So why not just do the addition directly? We can make life easy for our assembler if we want to. So what add immediate does is it will take the second two operands, which will be the zero register, which always holds an integer value of zero, and it'll take this number, which will translate into four in binary. Uh, and then it will add these two numbers together and store it into v0. Then we'll load an address. So we'll load the address of prompt one into a0 that will just ask for a value uh, for y. And then we'll go ahead and print that out uh, with this syscall. Then we'll set it up for um, a floating point read. So for that, we're going to need to set six into v0. Then we'll do a syscall to actually read in. And that will get read into different registers than, we see in, that we, than we've seen before, which are the floating point registers, which you can see over here. So we have floating point zero through 31 over here. So we'll go ahead and read those in. And then uh, we'll go ahead and move it to um, floating point register two. And that's because we're gonna be reading in three floating point numbers. So we don't wanna have every, everything just overwriting itself in F0. And the way we do that is this instruction, this move.s, so the move.s will move uh, specifically the single precision number. So that's what that qualifier is. So if we actually do move dot, so it says move floating point single precision. And so what we're doing here is we're moving the value stored in F0, which we just read in, into F2. Uh, so then we'll set it up for another read. So we'll print out another prompt. Then we'll actually prompt the user right here for, again, using the code six for another float, and then we'll move that into F1, and then one final time to read in that scaling factor of A, we'll uh, set it up for a print, print out here, set it up for a read, and then we will read it here. Um, and we can just leave that in F0 because we're done reading in, so because we're no longer going to be uh, uh, doing any other prompts or anything, we're not, we don't have to worry about overwriting F0. So then we actually get to the arithmetic. So what are some of the arithmetic instructions in, uh, in this assembly or in this instruction set? Uh, so there's all kinds of instructions. There's adds, there's divides, there's multiplies. 
Um, there's bit shifting, where we actually just move bits over a single place uh, each time or by a specified number of places. But we'll just take a look at some of the basics and uh, for integer arithmetic and for floating point arithmetic, you know, a lot of these just kind of extend, right? So we can do this mul.s and this it means flow, uh, multiplication, but for single precision numbers. So they work on these single precision registers. And then we have add.s, which is addition, but it adds on these single precision registers. And the reason why we need to specify is that floating point numbers are, uh, are represented differently than uh, double precision floating point numbers, which are 64-bit uh, floating point numbers. So they have much wider range of possible values. And then they're represented uh, differently still than just normal integers or signed integers. Uh, so they're just differentiated by this qualifier. So .s versus .d versus just add, uh, where add is for uh, integers. Okay, so we'll leave it as that. So how, how, how are we actually computing Saxby here? So what we're doing first is we have x stored in f0. We have, um, or sorry, yeah, we have, uh, or sorry, we have a stored in f0. We have x stored in f1, and then we have y stored in f2. So what we'll do is we'll save some register space here and we'll go ahead and multiply a times x and then we'll store it where a is currently being stored. So we're just kind of overwriting a, uh, but that's okay. And it saves us a register and so instead of taking up another register with um, the value that we generate with this multiplication, because the value of a will never be used again. You can think of it as what we like to refer to it as uh, the register is dead after that point or the value is dead. It's, it doesn't have any references in the future. So you now the register is basically free for us to use. Um, then we need to do the, so we did the ax, now we need the plus y part. So f0 stands for our ax now, and we'll do f0, which is ax plus y. And that's what this add s is. So the add s takes the latter of the two registers, it adds them together and puts it into f0, or puts it into whatever register we specify in that first position. So this will be ax plus y, and then ax plus y will be stored in f0. And that's pretty much it. So that's our basic er uh, arithmetic in MIPS. And then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll again print out another prompt that will say, you know, what the value of Saxby is. And then we'll go ahead and set up, uh, set up the system uh, with printing. So we're going to be printing a floating point number. So uh, new code, and that's going to be two. Two is for printing floating point numbers. And then so we'll do this move.s. So that move.s specifies moving a single precision number, uh, MOV is for moving uh, integer numbers, or uh, rather when we do uh, uh, just move, uh, that allows us to move integer numbers, but remember we can't use move. Uh, I don't, so move actually isn't in the instruction set, it's for the assembler, and so the assembler uh, takes that and uh, it will convert that into instructions. But uh, mov.d and then mov.s is what we use for single and double precision mo moving while uh, the whole word move we use for integers. Uh, and then we'll do a syscall to go ahead and print out that. And then of course we set up our program to terminate and terminate after that syscall. And then in our data section, we'll just have our uh, the text that we're going to print. So enter a Y value, enter an X value, enter an A value, and then Saxby result. So let's actually X, A, X, P, Y, yeah. And again, this dot ASCII is a directive that says, you know, this is going to be an ASCII string, and it will, and it wants. Uh, we're saying we're not going to null terminate it, so you can null terminate it. If we just do dot ASCII, it's not null terminated, so it uh, it knows to not add a null terminator, but we'll allow it to add a, no, a null terminator for us. So let's go ahead and assemble this. Here we go. We've got our uh, all our. our assembled instructions up here and so and uh, it's quite a bit longer than previous ones but we do have quite a bit more things going on we're reading in multiple numbers and we're printing stuff out and we're doing stuff with floating point numbers and then let's change this to ascii so you can see we've got all of our text values stored in here 
Okay, so let's go ahead and run it. So let's go to run IO, and then let's go to run the current program. All right, it's prompting us for a Y value. Let's just choose five. And then we'll choose an X value. Let's do two. And an A value, why not three? All right, and we get Saxby result equals 11. So uh, we can kind of check this in our heads. So Saxby is A times X plus Y. So A is three. X is two, so three times two is six, and then plus y, which is five. So at least six plus five is 11. Hey, we got the right answer. Uh, and we did, uh, and we did uh, uh, floating point Saxby. Um, so that's going to do it for this video. That is our example on basic arithmetic and MIPS. Later on, we'll do some more interesting things with memory management. Uh, and you know how we deal with you know, sub programs and uh, all kinds of uh, fun things and depending on what any of you guys want we can do examples that may be specific to what you're learning and you're having trouble with maybe even things like recursion so uh, let's go ahead and go over here and let's see what we have so if we go to github.com uh, we've got all the uh, all the code for the previous ones and links to the previous videos. And then if I go ahead and just take this and I commit this code that we have right here that we have saved, I'll say add Saxby example, I'll commit, and then I'll push to origin. All right, and we can reload this. Here we go, we've got arithmetic and saxby.asm. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. Again, uh, all my contact information is on this first page in the readme, so feel free to get in touch either in the comments or at my email if you have any questions or if there's a specific example you want. And be sure, of course, to check out the other series that I'm doing, such as on research, uh, on C++ programming, on parallel programming, and even on C++ data structures. So. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Art, and I hope you have a nice day.